Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications and I have some of the most exciting news that's hit Abilene area in a long time today for our town. Welcome to our town. Good news and I thought, who adds excitement to a topic like Patty O'Malley? And I said, nobody. Patty, tell us where we are and what we're doing here. Okay, we are at Neighbor to Neighbor on Cedar Street and today is our ribbon cutting after um, a month maybe of, of fix up and paint and work and people coming in rolling up sleeves and donations. It's been amazing. So today is our our event of cutting the ribbon and we're real excited. What is Neighbor to Neighbor going to do for us? Uh, neighbor to Neighbor um, is bringing in people who have all these gifts, these, these women who can sew and can cook and can um, have have all these talents, but where do they where do they put them? Um, and we have a young population of maybe single moms or or some of the younger folks who really need that help. Don't have the mentorship of how do I cook? How do I you know, how do I sew and mend? And uh, so hopefully we'll be bringing that together here as women helping women, neighbor helping neighbor. Um, there'll be classes here. Our first one is on pain self-management, which is a seven-week course, which will be a first first class. We have art journaling coming. Um, also, just coming in as a place to share with your neighbor, just to have time to a meeting spot. So we're open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and we welcome any woman who wants to come participate. I know this is a, an outgrowth of the efforts you have at the Cedar House and some of your interests co-align and I want you to describe to us on camera today what this will do for our community. The seed started with, with the Cedar House I, I, with a community for recovery for women um, and the one word that kept floating to the top, we've had 15 women through that program um, and the cabin group brings about 20 some women a week but the one word we kept hearing loud and clear was community. And that was seemed to be the biggest healing was the word community. And so we looked out at, at our community and thought, oh, this is it. We need a place in the middle of town that can be open to all women um, of all walks of life that, that can have that healing in just community. I, I, I so appreciate the chance to walk in here today and, and, and see this place in, I think I was here Monday. It looks vastly different from Monday to today, which is Thursday that we're filming this show. And uh, I invited two people to start this thing for a specific reason. It's because both of your faces are identified with different things in our community. Uh, you served business, uh, you served in the police department, you so served a lot of people, Kathy Cosby. Yes. And uh, when I was here the other day, we had a short conversation about what this place will mean. And you have a perspective on it from your life that I think is important. How will this help women in Abilene? Oh, I believe that this is so needed because there's so many women Sorry. that are isolated and that like Patty said, that have gifts to share with other people, to mentor other people, and people that are, women that are sitting in their house that need, need a friend, need fellowship, and um, we want to break that isolation and, and bring them here where they can share with other people, and not only their talents, but their, their life, and be there to help one another, and Part of the conversation we had the other day, uh, um, I'm a deputy sheriff reserve, have been for 19 years now. Yes. That's a scary thought, 19 <laughs> years. So, um, but really most of my experience with the topic of the challenges that are faced in the homes yes. comes from Eagle Communications and our technicians who are in people's homes every day and what they bring back to us in stories about what challenges face our community in homes. And uh, we share that, I yes. guess, understanding and knowledge. And I wanted you to just speak to that a little bit about what hope the Neighbor to Neighbor program will bring to those people. Well, I, that's the word hope. It'll bring hope that they can come here and 
and not be judged, but if there's something that they need help with, they can come and, and find that help here mm -hmm. and hope that their life, life can, can be just that little bit better. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you both for uh, putting your face in front of the camera today. So when people see you at Country Mart, they can ask you, hey, I saw you on TV. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. But Patty, I want you to introduce our guest who's going to finish out the program for us. Wonderful. We have Sister Loretta Jasper, who is the director of this program, and I am honored to invite her in. Um, what an important work as we're told, and I was told on Monday, that is about to start here. Mm -hmm. And you are going to make success happen with a lot of people to help you. So introduce yourself to us and tell us what the neighborhood to neighborhood, neighbor to neighbor program is going to do for us here in Abilene. Neighbor to neighbor on Cedar Street is replicating the program, a program that ha is existing in Concordia, Kansas. Okay. Uh, the difference between the two programs is Neighbor to Neighbor on Cedar Street here in Abilene is from the get-go is vested the vestings of um, the, the schools, the churches, the civic community, people, the, the investments, the support, the, um, the contributions, the time, the skills, the gifts starts initially from the Abilene Dickinson County community. And, um, and whereas in Concordia, the Sisters of St. Joseph um, vested our interests and our finances okay. in that. So okay. everything we do here in Dickinson County and Abilene comes from the local community and the county. Oh. And, the, and the intent is that any woman, any walk of life walks across that threshold. And um, lots of people look good in the day to day, but lots of people have hearts that are sad. Mm -hmm. And so by coming inside this door, the intent is that um, people will walk out in a better space. Hmm. What, a, what a grand opportunity, isn't it? Sister Loretta. Um, the hope of the human heart is what keeps us all lifted above the natural world. Um, I think hope is, uh, and what you can do for the women of our community, young women, isolated women, like Kathy Cosby spoke to, I think we see them all the time. This is, looks to me like a real opportunity to change the mm -hmm. metric. Mm -hmm. I believe it is. and. And uh, it's easy to think that neighbor to neighbor will be available and open to people who need help. That's a nice statement. Mm -hmm. Everybody benefits by being in touch with anybody. I agree. And Agreed. that's what we're all about here. That's what our intent is. Um, the place we're sitting in, 803 North Cedar, um, sits just north of the uh, Garfield School. Um, orange house, very easy to find and see, the big orange house, 1880s house or something like that, I was told. Some old, old, old. What a fantastic reinvention of a structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, our community, I, I think the world of the Abilene community, I think we're a great town. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we have a great opportunity. We have great history. I think our future is wonderful. And then there's the reality of people that you said. Mm -hmm. We can all look pretty polished on the outside, mm -hmm. but the heart of man is where trouble lies. That's correct. And uh, this goes to the heart of a specific group of people, and you have a specific plan to help them. I like to, what I say specifically to people on a regular basis is, um, you know, I might go someplace to help somebody, but I always walk out having an added spark. Yeah, helped. You yes, walk out helped. I walk out helped, yeah. yes. Well, the scriptures uh, uh, tell us that over and over and over yes. by serving, we're served. So mm -hmm. 
Um, but sometimes we need Sister Loretta's of the world and Patty O'Malley's and Kathy Cosby's to remind us of that and, and what an opportunity. So let's use that as a segue. When I was here Monday, there was a beehive of people, some of which I recognize, some of which I don't. Today, there's a group of people running around in here, some of which I recognize, some of which I don't, all of which are making progress go forward. I can't imagine that stopping after today. You're going to need people to help you move this thing forward. We will need people every day, every day, five days a week, from uh, we'll probably close our doors at four o'clock rather than five, which is what we were saying for quite a while. Right. But I think four o'clock is going to be a good shut off point. Okay. <laughs> and um, open our doors will open at nine o'clock. Anyone who is in the building in the morning will be provided lunch. All right. If a woman, uh, whether it's grandmother taking care of children or auntie who has the care of children, uh, the primary caregiver, zero to five years of age, if that woman comes in with a child, the child is welcome or the children are welcome mm -hmm. and they will be cared for while they are here. Okay. And uh, most of the time there is not a designated program that will be in place, although there will be programs in place. Um, if a woman wants to come for a half a day, if a woman wants to come every day for all day, it's great whatever whatever helps make a difference some women are empty nesters and they haven't opened a big pot they haven't cooked in a big mm -hmm. in a, a big meal right we need lots of cooks okay we need lots of people to pass on the skills of sewing and quilting and art painting uh, we will need house cleaners we will need house cleaners. All right. Um, we will need um, mentors. Just sit and talk and listen. Mm. Just sit and talk and listen. Oh, I'm glad you added that last line. Sit and talk and listen. Because as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking you need some people to talk to people. That's correct. And that's what that is. A, a conversation. Mm-hmm will help heal people. Absolutely. The community, Patty O'Malley mentioned to me off camera, the community word, she said it again on camera. Well, community, right now, you and I are a community for mm -hmm. this program. We're talking about a, something mm -hmm. we share a thought mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. That is an, an essential element of healing in the human mm -hmm. condition, is the ability to talk and be heard. That is correct. Very essential anymore. Yeah, so exciting. So uh, I want to go down a list. You said you want cooks, you want people who can sew, you want people who can clean, you want people who can sit down and talk to people. Because out behind that lens is a lot of people who are going, I don't know how I could help them. I want to say, I don't know of anybody out there that couldn't help you. Quite the opposite, after talking to the three of you a couple of times. So uh, it, there's, it's impossible for you not to be able to help down here. If, if, if you can sit and talk and uh, talk about life experiences and share things and your life struggles, successes, how can that not be useful here? That is correct. Another thing that's really very important for us to send out the beck and call for is um, we are um, not receiving clothing. We will not be receiving clothing. Okay. If someone is in need of clothing or household furnishings, we will have a partnership with the local uh, thrift store sure. for that to happen. Sure. But since we are providing meals, we would like if someone uh, has an interest in sharing uh, um, donations or food mm -hmm. donations, and certainly when the gardens get cranked up, we oh, are ready, sure. we okay. will be ready, yeah. and uh, yes. I think of all the organizational challenges around that short couple of sentences you just said, you know, it will take a lot of people to help just manage bringing food in, storing it, saying, no, we really don't need any more 100 pound bags of flour, you know, all of that organizational stuff. Uh, there are people out there very gifted with yes. those sorts of things who can come in and take a look at your kitchen, take a look at your storage space and say, here, let me just handle this for you. You're looking for that person. And we're going to be providing baking and cooking classes 
whoever is in that class takes that food home. We will be actually next Tuesday before our first class in self-management of chronic pain. Mm -hmm. We have somebody who is available to uh, from 11 to 12 to spend time with folks who want to mend. Some people need to sit with other people to do mending, either because it's such an awful job or they don't know how to do it. Um, I think of my mom, uh, she mended a lot of things. Yes. Um, and I also think of uh, my mom and her sisters when they got together, they were mending more than just stuff. That is correct. They were mending themselves. They were mending each other. The correct. conversation around the mending table. The old time quilting bees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, a lot of opportunity to, that's the community yes. word again, yes. that, that opportunity to sit down and become part of something. So yes. I, I got a proposition I want you to think about. Maybe okay. it's not a proposition, it's a thought, it's a thought in my head. I love thoughts. Um, so many people just don't have a group at all. You know, uh, there was a time where there was about three groups that had everybody in town in them. I think of a picture in Talmadge at the okay. uh, little historical museum up there that is a picture uh, of the men's Sunday school class at the Methodist Church up there back in the 50s. Yes. There's 120 some men in suits on the steps of the Talmadge Church. There aren't 150 people in Talmadge there now. Are not. But there were 150 men in that picture and that means wives and children. Mm -hmm. That group of people has, uh, since 1950, has fractured out and many of them go to work, go home, sit in front of some device for a while, go to bed, go to work, go home, sit in front of some device for a while, go to bed, and repeat that. And that social fabric has been torn apart because of that societal trend largely uh, a, a group of people that have suffered from that is you look at the go to work part are women um, the women that didn't go to work are now alone uh, the the women that do go to work may be at a work where there isn't a good social fabric uh, i you know, one thing creates another so you look at this place so my my, my proposition to myself as i as I think about it, isn't this an opportunity to reach out to people, specifically women, and say, we have something for you. All you have to do is walk in, and we will sit down together and figure out what it is and figure out a way of helping you, neighbor to neighbor, meet this need. Is this a dual proposition here, sir? Yes. Um, so. As we, as we look at that working, uh, we need people to help you. Yes. We need donations to help you. Yes. And we, and we need co conversation. So, you know, my proposition to the people behind the camera is don't just watch this and walk away. Go ask somebody about it, which is why I put two other people in these chairs. You will see some of these faces in the community. Go ask them about it. Take a step forward. Don't just sit here and watch and, and walk away. But my proposition is get engaged at some level and, and watch another great thing happen in Abilene, Kansas. Make another piece of history great here. Become a part of something that is in constant bubbling that influences and affects individuals, families, the neighborhood, and most especially the current gener generation and the next generation. Mm. I, my youngest daughter is now 24. When she was in high school, she worked at, uh, as a checker at Country Mart. And when she came home, dad would always go, so how was work today? Most of the time she'd go, great, great. Occasionally she would come home and I could see it on her face what the answer was gonna be. And I, and I would say, what's the problem? And it was always a interaction with the group of people you just described in a checkout line. It was a a mother and child that and her heart was breaking over the interaction mm -hmm. so there's not much you can do about that as a checker at West Country Mart other than to try to be kind 
but this place is an opportunity for those people to bring those frustrations in and find help, find solutions, find some community and make a change in your life. That is correct. Okay, we've got a minute. I want you to remind people who you are, how to get in touch with you, your phone number if you have one, and uh, we'll sign off and say Godspeed. I'm Sister Loretta Jasper, and I'm the director of Neighbor to Neighbor on Cedar Street. Our house is at 803 North Cedar Street, the orange house on the corner without the rooster that is across the street <laughs> from the vacated Garfield School. We're open from eight, excuse me, we are open from nine to four Monday through Fridays. We are available for any woman from any walk of life to walk across the threshold and see what is on the other side of the door for them. Can't say it better than that. Well done. Thank you for joining me here today. Uh, folks, thank you for joining us here in our town. It's a fantastic place to be. Better because of things like neighbor to neighbor. We're excited to see what you, the community, can do with this exciting opportunity. I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. Wishing you a great day.